taking out the competition. The kick ass podcast that make you want to listen. The place where boxing fans and fighters rejoice. Thumbs up for Richie. You're listening to the fighter's voice. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Richard Ortiz of The Fighter's Voice, the only voice that matters. And I'm like our guest today, Aaliyah Orozco. We're simply knocking out the competition with us. I got to give her a better, stronger title than that, one that she's earned. She's a journalist, a sports reporter, TV host for LA TV, and she has some news to talk about behind the gloves where she's to bring full coverage and now we're going to wait and see exactly what happens because there's been some stirring some ruckus happening as we speak nevertheless we always turn it positive i want to welcome our guest Aaliyah. welcome to the fighter's voice hello thank you so much for having me i'm so excited to be here well we're excited to have you it's a long time upcoming so to speak because the first time i met you i think i invited you on the show or said you know what it'd be great for you to come on the show and now you're here yes i remember that i know full circle moment <laughs> exactly and i always keep your circle small and strong that's very true this is more no that's very true <laughs> yes so my first question is are you going to vegas are you in vegas now will you be covering the canelo charlo fight no, I'm actually back in LA. I actually just moved to LA this past weekend. So I'm getting all settled in in my apartment and I'm going to be at LA Fashion Week this weekend. So I'm getting back into the LA world for a minute and then I'm going to be at covering boxing events starting October again. And I'm excited to jump back into it. Well, there you go. Well, well, when you say um, LA, where are you coming from exactly? I'm from Vacaville. It's a small town in NorCal, but that's my hometown. And I've lived there basically like my whole life. But then I moved to SoCal because I'm in college currently at Azusa Pacific University. So I've been there, but then I took um, nine months to go back to Vacaville this year to get my, to start building and working towards my real estate license. So I got all my schooling done. And now I'm moving back to finish my senior year and continue doing the boxing reporting. So I'm just really excited to be here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm flattered right now because you have all this going on, going to school. You have some majors. There's some big time moving, some big time changes. And yet you make time for the fighter's voice, the only voice that matters. Of course. Of course. You know, I had to. I was like, I got to hop on here. This is a very big week in boxing. So I wanted to be a part of it any way I could. You know, it's fight week in Las Vegas, and you know how exciting it can be. The energy changes. There's a glow, and there's a certain step to everybody there in Las Vegas. Now, let's cut right through the chase since we brought that up. Who do you have and why? You know what? I'm usually, I never usually voice my opinion. I keep my two cents out, but, but because for the fighter's voice, I'm going to give my opinion. First time ever, <laughs> but I think yeah, Anello is going to win. I just think he's like an all time great. He's one of my favorite fighters and I don't know. I, I just, I really just have faith in him, but I don't, I do think it's going to be a really good fight. Like I don't think it's going to be an easy win for him. I think Jermel is a great fighter and I know he had to move up like two weight classes. So I don't know how that's going to be portrayed for him, but I think he's really strong and he, I feel like he really knows what he's doing inside the ring. So I just think this is going to be like a fight we've never seen before, which I'm really excited to watch. I wish I was there, but I'm super excited to watch it. You know what? That's um, I, I have it, you know, like you do. I, I, I just say I'm rooting for Canelo to, to um to be victorious. The reason being is because he did sign with PBC to make these big fights that we're going to get ready to watch this Saturday. And, um, Charlo's no joke, so I want him just to make sure when it's all said and done, and uh, speaking for Canelo, that he went through the cream of the crop. He didn't duck anybody, and I'm expecting an exciting fight, and I do believe uh, Canelo will have his hand raised when it's all said and done, possibly a, a TKO. Exactly, yeah. I agree. Well, well, listen, I know you were at the Crawford Spence fight covering it. Was that correct? Yes, I was. That was fun. <laughs> What what made it fun for you? Uh, the whole fight week or the event itself, the energy off the crowd. What what's something that stands out in, in your mind that you recall? I just think the energy, like you were talking about. There's just 
a certain energy that I can't even explain that happens during fight mm -hmm. week. And especially like a really big fight like that one and the one we're having this week. I don't know. So just being a part of it in any way is just like, I'm always just like in shock almost. Like I just really love my job and I get so excited to be sitting there. I'm just like, oh my gosh. But I don't know. It's just, it's a great environment. I feel like everybody's like happy there. Like you never go to a fight and like people are low energy. Like everybody wants to be there. The The crowd's going wild. The media is excited. There's just like different people come in a stage that we weren't expecting. Mike Tyson. It was just like, it's, how could you not have fun? <laughs> exactly. So when you're in Vegas and I'll work, do you ever make time for Aaliyah? Do you ever make time for yourself? And if so, if you like to share, what do you like to do? Like just in well, general please, or I'm like fine. during fight weeks? Uh, during fight week. I mean, because you're in Vegas is, is why I'm, I'm, um, I'm bringing this up. Well, yeah, actually, it was really fun because last time I was in Vegas for Spence Crawford, it was actually Michelle's birthday, MJP from Behind the Gloves. And that was actually my first time meeting her in person, but I've been working with her. I've been working for her for some time, but it was her birthday week. So we had fun. Let's just say that we had so much fun. It was like, Party one day, party the next, party the next. Like me and Michelle couldn't even keep up because I'm not someone who like goes out that much and I guess she's not either. So we were just so tired. Like we started, like I flew to LA, no, I flew to Vegas for Michelle's birthday. And that same night we went all the way out to Area 51 in the desert and we stayed overnight. Right. Um, Rashida Ali was there too. It was like some other boxing people got a, were a part of Michelle's birthday. But then we forgot, hear this. We forgot water in the desert. So oh <laughs> we're all staying overnight. Wow. Yes, I know. And we forgot water. So I'm kind of like freaking out. But that's that's how we started the first day. And we did like an all nighter. We watched the stars. It was crazy. I've never experienced that, like camped out with the stars. But then the second day we went to the club for Michelle's birthday. That was like till two in the morning. <laughs> and then the next day was started the weigh-ins. So, um, then we, not the weigh-ins, the media workout. It was Wednesday. Yeah. And then we just kept going, you know, press conference, weigh-ins. And then there was another fight that week. It was the Sinisa Estrada one um, after the weigh-ins. So we also went to that. So we just pulled like an all-nighter basically for the whole entire week. So I was just wow. like off of Celsius, my energy, and I just went for it. I had like one of the most epic weeks of my life. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There you go. Kind of like the, the movie Hangover, but for women. Yes, exactly. It was so fun. I told Michelle, I was like, I feel like I just like lived in eternity. Like, I feel like so much happened in that one week. It was like, I feel like I aged by like two years in a good way. Like the best way. I got all these new memories. Well, you know what? She's grown. And when I say grown, I mean from... Uh, behind the gloves to national TV, doing what she loves. And uh, I remember having her back on the show. And I think I'm, I'm maybe the one of the uh, few who asked her, how did it all begin? And actually, I was doing a radio show back then. And she said something to the effect that uh, Manny Pacquiao had had a fight. And all she did was make a video and stage her opinion. But she didn't know the outcome of that and how many likes and follows or a lot of people. that Well, that opinion, that video she made, it blew up. And she just went with it. And she said that was a part of her start. And now she's doing wonderful. So shout out for Michelle. Yeah, shout out Michelle. She is amazing. I love to hear that story. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Anytime. You go to the archives, it'll be there on the YouTube channel, The Fighter's Voice. Well, I have to watch now, it. That's special. Please do. Off the camera, you started to mention something. And I said, wait, 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 hold on. Let's save the good news for on camera. So you said something, there may be some changes. Do you care to share that? And can you share that? Some changes in, in some of the uh, platforms that you represent or used to represent or may still represent, but as of right now, it, it, it's up in the air. And if you care to share it, hey, we're Yes. Um, I think Michelle has made her announcement on Instagram, but really exciting. I'm so pumped for her. She's actually going to be going to law school. She wants to be like a sports attorney. So she's making a big jump in her career, which is so exciting. I think that's so amazing. That's awesome. But with that, she's taking a step down a little bit with Behind the Gloves and just 
she's taking on a big role with school. So I know right now she's reporting for different channels, but I'm not exactly sure what the update is with Behind the Gloves or what that looks like. But for me, I'm kind of just, I'm a freelance sports reporter right now. So I've been reporting for different channels, but I've been working with Fight Hype most recently and I've been loving it. I love all their fans on there and I don't know, it's been a great channel to work with. I've loved every single channel I've worked with. I've also, of course, worked with Behind the Gloves, which I'm mentioning, which that was another wonderful channel. And I actually started with Fino Boxing, which that was a great start for me. So I'm just so thankful for everybody's mentorship and support in this sport. Well, you know what I see in your future? I, I see the Fighter's Voice LA with your host, Aaliyah Orozco. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> I can see that. Thank take you. Take over LA. Thank you so take much. Take over LA. I the really appreciate that. LA. I'm going to take that. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank there you, Rick. I appreciate hey, that. Yeah, and, and start it up. Get it going. I mean, because I want this brand to grow. And it takes somebody that's driven, someone that's dedicated, and somebody that uh, knows how to handle uh, the, the microphone. And, you know, like you would tell a fighter, be a champion in the ring and also outside of the ring. And the way you carry yourself, conduct yourself, uh, it'd be awesome for you to. And we would, with open arms, gladly have you host L.A., the fighter's voice, with your host, Aaliyah Orozco. It sounds great, don't you think? Yes, let's do it. Let's talk more about this. I'm like, do you see how happy I look? I would love to do that. I just got here to okay. L.A., which I told you. So I'm just like, I knew great things were going to happen here, but I didn't know what to expect yet. So even just hearing that, I'm like, wow, there's new opportunity and new great things in the future. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I got to ask you this question. How did it all start for Aaliyah? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is a long story, but, <laughs> but I'm going to try to make it as short as I can get to the sweet spots. But basically, I have always, ever since I was born, ever since I was a little girl, I've loved entertaining. Like I told my parents ever since I was probably like five that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. And they would just like, they would just look at me and laugh of just like, they just loved it. But they were like, what are, what are you going to do? Like I wasn't the best singer. No, um, I tried dancing. I did dancing for some years, but I never knew what that would look like for me. Yeah. But yeah, my whole life I competed in pageants. I was on the dance team. So I entertained any way I could. And I would always like make up dance routines and perform them at all my cousins parties, like people that weren't even my family. I would try to perform at all their parties. I just loved it because I love people and making people smile and laugh. So then when I went to college, I chose to come to SoCal because obviously there is an entertainment industry here and it's been on my heart for years. So I got here and I was like, OK, like, <laughs> let's try to make something happen, which I had no idea that it was going to be in TV hosting. I, I really had no idea what to expect. And I remember even like for the first minute when I was deciding that I was going to do this and take this like leap of faith and just try something totally out of my comfort zone. I just didn't know what to expect. And I knew people from my hometown are probably going to be like, what is she trying to do? Like, I don't know who she thinks she is, but. I went for it. I tried. And yeah, I got a publicist. I started attending red carpets and networking. I took acting classes. I started booking with different studios. And then I had my first big audition for Latino Alternative Network. And I remember it was um, a bunch of beautiful Latinas in the room. And I was so nervous. I wasn't going to go to the audition. I was like, just couldn't believe I even got a call back. But I went and it was I was the first one to go into the audition room. And I just I didn't I've never been in an audition where like people are recording me and there's all these cameras and I didn't even know what I was supposed to be saying. But I was just talking about how I was from Vacaville, this small town that stands for Cowtown, actually. And I just love people and I'm passionate about hosting. And I booked the role and my life changed ever since then. They really developed me as a TV host and I've been able to attend different premieres for Disney and Avatar and just really fun, exciting things. And my show is called Get It Girl that I'm on and it's a woman empowerment show. So we have different like celebrities, entrepreneurs, influencers come on our show and we get to celebrate their walks of life. But 
And then I got into the boxing world. You see, it kind of is like a progressive story. <laughs> but no, I'm listening. Yes, thank you. But then I got into the boxing world because shortly after I booked the LA TV job, um, I got asked by this other company if I wanted to go report for this magazine cover launch. And I was like, heck, yes, I do. I'm like pumped that I'm booking these jobs and my dreams coming true. I was like super eager. So I went to the red carpet, but it ended up being an Oscar De La Hoya magazine cover launch. So there oh, was nice. boxing people there. And I've never been in the sports world. I just saw myself at first more doing like entertainment hosting, stuff like that, probably acting, commercials, print, more things like that. But then somebody approached me and he said, um, I think you would be a great sports reporter for my friend's channel. And he gave me um, Fino Boxing's Instagram. So then I reached out to him and he told me, he was like, do you have any examples of your work? And I'm like, no, like I literally just started this hosting stuff like five months ago. <laughs> like, no, I don't. So it took some time. I didn't work with him yet. But then fast forward to this year, I was in New York for the first time ever. And I got a DM from Fino Boxing and it was a Tuesday night. And he said, do you want to cover the Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis press conference in Beverly Hills on Thursday morning? And I was like, Oh my gosh, like what? So then I call my dad and my dad's like, we have to make this happen. Like, I know this is about to be crazy flights for you. And because I wasn't flying back from New York until it was planned till Thursday. So I had to change my whole itinerary in order to come to this. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And my dad was like, I'm going to support you. So I, I booked my flights. I remember I flew from New York to San Francisco to LA and I got to LA at like three in the morning on Thursday and then I rushed to the press conference at 11 a.m. and I never did anything in the sports world. I had no idea what to expect. I remember I stayed up all night watching boxing interviews, like watching sports reporters, trying to figure out what questions to ask and I showed up and I did it and they basically were telling me it was kind of like my audition to be on the channel with however I do right now. So I was super nervous, but I did it. And another fun little story with that, um, I remember they were telling me, obviously you guys could see, I'm very high energy. <laughs> That's a part of my That's personality. Good. Energy is good. <laughs> what? Energy is good, it's contagious. <laughs> Thank you so much, I appreciate that. But one of the mans was telling me, he was like, um, Ryan's going to love your energy. Like he's going to feed off of it. But they're like, Gervonta is a lot more chill. I don't know how he's going to be with you. And I was like, oh no, like, oh no, <laughs> like how should I act? I was like really freaking out. But then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be myself. I'm just going to ask what I think. I'm just going to make him feel comfortable. And he, that was like my best interview. That interview went viral. They actually like used the clickbait as like, Javante Davis smiles like never seen before with Aaliyah Orozco. And I remember I was I just freaking that. out. Oh my God, you saw it. My dad was freaking out. My dad's friends were freaking out. Everyone in Vacaville, my hometown was like, what? So it was just crazy for me. And then just ever since that first event, I just fell in love with it. I was like, wow, I never saw myself at first being in the sports world. But wow, like I, I loved it. It was just like an instant love that I knew I had to be a part of forever so then i found michelle i started networking with her and i just kept working hard every single day because i was like this is the rooms i want to be in this is the place i want to be in so i start studying really hard and now i'm here and i'm just so thankful like so so thankful i love my job what makes you unique uh, this uh, question is coming from eric hernandez dog boxer okay i want to ask you this what makes you <clears throat> so unique from the rest Wow, <laughs> this feels like a pageant question. <laughs> oh, really? Well, that's a great question by Eric. Um, do you mean just like in general or like as of like reporter? What makes you different? What makes you click? Why are, why are you so different? Why did you make him smile? There must um, have been something. something I, about think it's, I think it's just my energy. I think I just genuinely, I've always said that on like when I used to apply for student council and other roles and stuff, they always ask that question of like, what sets you apart from other people? 
And I would always just say my heart. And I was like, that might not make sense to some people, but it makes sense to me because I know how I feel like in the inside about people. And I think it just comes out of just like, I'm just happy to be there and to be near them. And I think too, of just like celebrating like people's big moments with them is just like, I don't know. It's so special. I think human connection is really like what we live off of. So I think I just like, it's my aura. It's the energy, the Aaliyah energy. (laughs) There you go. Give it a name. I like that. I, I love energy too. Uh, energy is, like I said, is contagious. And, uh, you know, if they don't have energy, give them some energy. My mom always said, uh, mijo, they don't have a smile, give them one. So if they don't have energy, give them some. I love that. No, that is so true. Because when you have good energy or you're smiling at people, it's so reciprocated. Like it can change someone's whole mood. It's my favorite part. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And for one reason or another, they seem to think you're like that 24 seven, but you know, that's a whole different story and a whole different opinion. <laughs> now, listen, tell us, what was that press conference like? Uh, what was the interview like from interviewing Ryan to interviewing Tank Davis? Both so amazing. Unfortunately, my interview with Ryan, I think that the mic didn't work because I, I never saw the interview, but that's what I'm assuming. But still, I remember how the interview went and... He's just a great guy. I if, I feel like that was the best fight I could have started with. Like they're just both great people and I don't think they knew it was my first time, but I don't know. They just both had really good energy and I, I feel like they're they're very different, but they're both like alike in the same way. Like I don't their energies were just like I don't know. I I just felt like they were my friends almost. Like it just felt very easy to talk to them and I think they were really excited about the fight. So they wanted to talk about it and they were eager. And then I think everyone that even attended that press conference was super cool. Like that was my first time interviewing Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins. And now seeing them later in my career, it's been like another full circle moment since they were like the first people I interviewed. But that press conference was all just like so real for me. I was just like pumped. (laughs) So who's on your bucket list? Who would you like to interview? And who who would you like to challenge yourself to interview definitely mike tyson i would love to interview mike tyson i actually just met mike tyson at the spence versus crawford fight and i was just like i don't even know i just couldn't believe it happened like mike tyson's my parents favorite fighter and we watched like all his videos all the time so i remember i just like turned around and he was just standing behind me in line and i was like I don't know. I just thought it was going to take me like a few more years in the boxing world to just like cross paths with him. But I was just, I was just super excited, but I would love to actually like sit down and talk with him one day. I got to interview Evander Holyfield. So that was a really big moment for me. I, I, that was someone else I really wanted to interview. And I really do want to also interview Canelo. So that's also on my bucket list of people I want to interview. There you go. There you go. I'll share with you this. Uh, one is for me is Conor McGregor uh, and Mike Tyson. I met Mike Tyson uh, right when he got out of his vacation. And uh, it was his first comeback fight with Peter McNeely. Oh, wow. and I remember my mom took a picture uh, with him and it was a, a picture uh, like with uh, with film. You know, it wasn't these kind of cameras. And I remember he said something. He goes, oh, I want a copy of that. So if I run into him, I'm going to say, I hope you remember, but here's your copy. And I'll give him a copy because he did say that. And um, he signed a, a baseball, I mean, a, a card for my mom and the ink off the pen because it was a, um, one of those uh, pens where you got to shake it. So the uh-huh. ink was on the bottom. So in doing so, his print, half of his print is actually on that uh, on that signature. So I know he was what? doing the ink and stuff. And yeah, uh, so, you know, I'll kind of remind him about that. And I'll show him some throwback pictures. But one guy that I do want to scratch off my bucket list and uh, – because of, of something that happened. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, at one point, wanted to interview Floyd Mayweather, but uh, I'll scratch him off. Why? Our paths crossed, and it, and it wasn't what I expected it to be. I was kind of disappointed, but it happens sometimes, you know? No, really? You got to have tough skin. That, yeah, you got to have tough skin. That's the worst, though, especially when you, like, really, like, look up to someone or love someone, yeah. and then you, like, cross well, I admire paths. them. Wait, admire was them, it just... Yeah. And, and, yeah, it happens. No, so you don't want to interview him anymore? 
Or I mean, it would take an act of God, you know, it would just for it to happen. I mean, yeah, but for it to happen, I would welcome it, but I'm not going to say, hey, he's there. I'm going to make sure I go down there like I did the last time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I had the opportunity of interviewing uh, Manny Pacquiao and very nice guy, classy guy. And it didn't hit me till on the way home. It didn't hit me until I was driving and, and I didn't see myself interviewing the fighter. It was it hit me. Wow. The senator of the Philippines. You know, that's what kind of hit me. Wait, did, were you able to interview him? Yes, you know, Manny Pacquiao, yes. Oh my goodness. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That is huge. Yeah. What was it like talking with him? Oh man. At first they broke the ice because they let all the media in there. And um I asked all my great questions that I had, you know, for him there. So when it was the one-on-one interviews at Wildcard Gym, they uh took us from the upstairs all the way downstairs. Because it started off downstairs, then we went upstairs for the for the public. And then went back downstairs again. And what you don't see during the interview is ABC 47 ESPN. You don't see them as as you know, when we're doing the interview, they're Mm -hmm. all there. So look around. So I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to ask him? I asked him all the questions I, I was thinking of before. And as I'm thinking his um, manager, Sean goes, okay, Richard, you're next. So (laughs) by him putting me on the spot, I just had a boom. That was probably the best thing that can happen because I started to look at, okay, that's guys from ESPN. This guy's from 40, 47, whatever, ABC and uh, CNN because they were all there because he was getting ready to fight uh, Keith Thurman. Mm. And, uh, so that was the best thing that ever happened where they just put you on the spot. You don't got time to think. And, and it went well. It went well because prior to that, he had sent me a personal video for my son. So I was I was thanking him before we, we went on and uh, – Thanked him again after we went off. So he remembered and and it was cool. It was awesome. It was a great moment. That is such a sweet story. Is there, can you watch the interview on here? Like, is it on your channel? Absolutely. So after we get off tonight, you subscribe to the channel, The Fighter's Voice, and then pull up Manny Pacquiao. And you can critique my work and let me know what you think. Oh, no, I'm so excited to watch it. I know what you mean, though. Of it's, it is better when it's almost like you kind of just have to, you're kind of just thrown yes. into it. You got to just go. Yeah. So that was my next question. Now, if you're there in line and you're waiting your turn and you have you have an idea of what you're going to ask, how do you change that moment? Because another reporter will ask it or he'll go there and, and or he'll kind of answer a question that you were getting ready to ask him. How do you prepare yourself and how do you transition that? Honestly, I do so much research like before I even go there on each fighter and I have like honestly, about 15 different questions I could ask just kind of for that matter. But honestly, when I'm interviewing, it always changes. Like I never asked what I thought I was going to ask, like (laughs) just based off, like once I'm talking to them, I'm like, okay, they're more this type of person. Let me, let me ask more of this type of stuff. Or you can also see when you're interviewing someone of like, they don't really like that subject and they're starting to be resistance towards me and I want them to feel closer. So I bring up a new topic And then I see their eyes light up and I'm like, okay, let's keep talking about that. It gets you more comfortable. So I kind of just always change it. But for me, I always just, I don't know. I just always want to make them feel comfortable. So when I do ask the stuff that's going to cause something, I do it at the right time. I kind of throw it in there when I feel like they've adjusted to me finally. (laughs) So what's your biggest strength when you're interviewing? Able to ad lib or just... uh at the moment change what you need to do on the drop of a dime, just transition. I think that just transition. I didn't really realize that until I brought a different videographer with me recently to do an interview with Shane Mosley. We did like a one-on-one, but he was telling me after he was like, you transition very well from topics to topics. Cause we ended up doing like about like a 35 minute sit down interview, which that was my longest interview so far. And I was so nervous before I even got in the room with him. Like when in the car, I'm like all preparing. I'm like, what if I run out of ideas? Or like, should I ask him this, that? What's the most important? And then, you know, we got in the room and, you know, you just start realizing like they're just a normal person and it's just, it just gets so comfortable. And then before you know it, it's like you're just talking to your friend and the conversation just changes easily. And I just go to the next thing and hop over here. And so I think that for me, that's my advantage. It's just like, I don't know, almost conversational. I think people say that about my style a lot. It's very conversational. Like I don't think I come off super like reporty. I'm more of just like 
So, <laughs> how are you doing? I don't know, just ease my way into it. And then it's like I'm talking to my best friend. You have an intro or you just jump right into it? Oh no, I have an intro. I, I always want to start really strong with my intro. I, I usually say the same thing, but I usually say my name and who I'm reporting for. And yeah, I, I, I kind of change it every time of just like where I'm at or like, I don't know, but I always like to start with a very strong intro of like, hey everyone. And I say my name loud and proud and I start the interview. There you go. There you go. Now, What's been your biggest moment so far? Well, these are such beautiful questions. You are a great interviewer. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Um, my biggest moment so far. I don't know because I feel like every time I leave a fight, it's like my biggest moment. Like I'm always up to here. Like I wish I could record the phone calls I have with my parents after a fight because I'm just like on cloud nine of just happiness. And it's like every time I meet somebody else that was so life changing or somebody else that just told me something that made me think differently, or I am a, a fighter responded very well with me, or there's a new opportunity. It's just always something new or I make a new friend. And I don't know. So every single time it's, it's been great for me. And I don't, I don't know. Like, honestly, every fight I can think of, there's been like, something awesome that happened but i would say so far in my career the spence and crawford fight was probably my biggest moment and one of the biggest moments in my career there you go and there's more to come so i always think uh that way that it's there and be ready for you know just the roof to come down and be able to handle all the success and have your arms open you know because it's all going to pour in your cup thank you so much thank you Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. And I will say this. A lot of our guests that come on The Fighter's Voice, their careers take off. They really do. I believe this show is truly blessed. You know, uh, long story short, I dedicate it to my son, who I no longer have. So I always end my interview with a thumbs up for Richie. That's how I keep his uh, name alive and his legacy going. And it keeps me sane. You know, uh, that's my serenity. So everybody that comes on the show, I mean, their career takes off. Whether it's a fighter, it's a host. It's a videographer, whoever is attached or was attached to the team. They're doing something that they've always wanted to do. And, you know, the blessings come. That's going to make me cry. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for starting this and keeping your son's legacy going in such a beautiful way. That's that's what it's about. And I hope people take inspiration from this. And I'm so honored that you allowed me to be on the show. So thank you so, so much. This is actually the first podcast I've ever done. So this is a huge moment for me, too, and I'm happy it's your channel. Well, it's your audition, so when you take over L.A., so just look at it that way, right? So what? Somebody told you that before. <laughs> what? <laughs> I hope I did a good there audition, you, go. you guys. <laughs> there, there, there you go. See, an audition without even thinking. It's just you just are just natural at what you're doing. I've watched you, and, um, you know, when I met you, and I watched your work. And then I, I was just, all these, these interviews were pouring out and I'm like, oh my gosh, she interviewed this person or she interviewed that person. And, and when I see that happen, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you. It's never, oh, well, how does she do that? Or who does she, no, it, there's no time for that. Uh, you know, your time will come. I always say that to myself and it's when it does, how do you prepare yourself? How are you going to handle it? And, you know, are you going to be at your best? And um, I always try to be at my best. Sometimes I'm not in my best conditions, but I don't want to turn the interview down. And I'll tell you a short story. Um, I thought, you know, media day was over. So, of course, I go to the bar in, in Las Vegas. I have about two or three, about three and a half. <laughs> and then I see this, this person that I need to interview. So I'm like trying to get sober real quick. <clears throat> okay, let's roll this because I got to make this happen. And then I look back at it. I go, okay, I'm going to edit that part out, that part out. And I'll just take the meat right there. And that was going to be my next question. Have you ever, ever interviewed anybody under the influence? No, <laughs> no, maybe, maybe when I'm way more in the career, but I think since I just started it right now, every time I'm still almost got the jitters a little bit. So I feel like I would not, I don't know. I feel like I'm not even at that point yet where I would even be able to be like, do I got this? <laughs> I don't know. But it would probably be fun. I don't know. I, I think Aaliyah off a little tequila shot could be one of our yeah. best interviews yet. I think it would be probably the most fun. So honestly, maybe. I want to do some fun like videos with the fighters and different type of like, 
I don't know, videos, and that might be one of them. Maybe I'll take a shot and then I'll learn how to box or something crazy. <laughs> there you go. Just have your videographer never stop filming, even before and after. And when I know I'm going to interview somebody, somebody big, um, I got a chance to interview uh, Jose Suleiman Jr. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, Jose Suleiman's son. And I knew that night, he said, okay, first thing in the morning at nine. So I was there in Vegas. I was ready to have a few. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that because I know ahead of time what I got in store for me. So I didn't even touch a drink, didn't do anything, went to sleep early because I wanted to be up for that interview. And, um, but like I said, the last time I was at a bar and I saw this certain person go by and I said, oh, I got to get this interview right now. It's, it's an opportunity. So I had to take that interview. So in doing so, I mean, I could sober up pretty quick and, uh, it went okay. It went, it went a lot better than I thought it would go. Do you feel like you were more loose because it's almost like you were a little tipsy still? Um, I felt like I really didn't care. I was asking some questions. I mean, when I say that, I, okay, I guess that it was a more loose. I really didn't care to, um, uh, I was just me. I was me like, like, like two guys talking in the garage. My question just came out. See, so, I think that's a good you know, thing though. It's almost like it, it is. It is. I just wanted to make sure I pronounced my words correctly where there was no slur or there was no hiccuping or none of the above. Cause uh, you know, but I, I wasn't gonna let that guy get away and, and he honored the interview and you know, he stood there and he, he talked some more. He talked about Tyson Fury, he talked about Josh Taylor and uh, yeah. So he walked in. It wasn't like, okay, get away, you know, any of that stuff, but. I had to take the interview. It was there. The opportunity was there and we went with it. I love that. You did it. You're like, I got, I got to figure this out right now. So we're up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It'd be like, like that. You know, try to clean up real quick and boom. <laughs> so it was cool. So I had to ask you that question because you know, you are in Vegas sometimes and now what were it, Okay. If you were in Vegas and you're there and you're with your videographer, you guys are just having a, having a good time afterwards, mission accomplished. And then Mike Tyson's just walking by. I mean, you would do the same, I think, you know, hey, I got to get this interview. Here's an opportunity right here. Oh, yeah. So I would, would sober up real quick. You got to sober up real quick. I actually just turned 21 this year, though. So I'm super like new into all the whole alcohol okay. world of like, I don't know. I actually just like experienced Vegas for the first time this year. Um, But it actually hasn't been during a fight week. Just during fight week, I'm just I'm so tired by the end of the day, like. You know, I use all my energy for the events to be all excited with the fight fans and the fighters. So then when I get home, I'm just A lot like, of standing, a lot of walking. <laughs> oh, and in heels? Oh, my gosh. I didn't oh, realize yeah, I was on go. hard mode, Rich. I was on hard mode for all, like, the first five fights I went to. I was like, and then I met Michelle, and she was like, wait, you're wearing your heels at the end of this? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, wait, and you're not carrying a suitcase? Like, she all, she's all walking in her sandals rolling her little like rolling suitcase and I'm all wearing like super high heels in my dress carrying like a whole bag that's like taking my shoulder out I finally got my stuff together I have a cute little suitcase and I bring a change of shoes afterwards so when I'm gotta go run to the fighters I could do it more in a see you're transitioning you're, you're transitioning yourself from high heels to some nike airs or something comfortable you see no but when i do my interviews i, I always got to wear the heels i always pop out in the heels ridge <laughs> there you go hey there you go you, you got to look that i've always say look sexy professional exactly exactly i really love to elevate any occasion i can like i try to dress up for people's parties and for fights just make it even like more celebration so i always put a lot of thought into my outfits for fight night and the whole week and everything i take it really seriously and i love fashion so it's just like something else fun for me to do <laughs> well well that's who you are and at the same time you're having fun enjoying uh doing what you're doing ali setback told me and I'll, and I'll quote this over and over again so richie do what you love you never work a day in your life mm -hmm. i love that so true. Yeah, and, it's, and it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. So listen, it's football season. You got to let me know who's your football team, who's your football team and who's your baseball team. Oh my gosh. Okay. So my football team is actually the Raiders. Okay. <laughs> and my baseball team, I would have, it's hard. No, I still have to go with, okay, honestly, 
it is the Dodgers now. But my my parents and my go. grandparents are going to be like, dang, she just switched up. Because my grandpa's like the biggest 49er and Giants fan. Like he has a whole sports oh, bar wow. with their stuff everywhere. Like they got to come see it. So me saying that is like letting him down. But I've been living in LA. So the Dodgers, it's just, you know, they hit different. They're a great team. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are. They are. They are. Fernando Vargas Jr. is uh, texting me, so I just text him back right now. Have you had a chance to interview the, the... Oh, yeah, you did. I watched that video. That was great content. You were interviewing two of the Vargas brothers, and then all of a sudden... Uh, uh, was it Emiliano? No. Yeah. yeah. Emiliano and Senior came in. I love that interview. I love the way they came in. That that See, that content, when you capture that, that is awesome. That was so fun. That was such a fun moment. I remember that was like... Yeah, I love when I just get to do like the fun interviews and that gets captured. Yeah. But I remember that was a really sweet moment for me with them because that was only my second fight. I actually met you at my first fight, the Stockton one for John Beck versus yeah. Butler. But um, I just got sent to Vegas and I didn't know anybody. It was for the Haney Loma fight. And I remember I already came, I already missed a press conference. So I was already kind of like behind on interviews. So the weigh-ins was like important for me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't even know anyone. Like, I don't know who I can interview. Like, I was kind of nervous. And then in comes the Varguses. And I just met uh -huh. them um, the previous weekend for the first time. But then they remembered me and everything. So that interview was actually, like, my highest views that week. And they made it really fun. And I remember I just felt so comfortable for a minute. I was like, oh, my gosh, I found my friends. Like, I have somebody that I know here. So that was a really fun interview. They're, they're a great family. No, they are. They are. They're, they're down to earth. And, um, you know, I followed his dad's career. His dad was, was a straight warrior. And, and now he's living life right now because he, he's watching his sons prosper. He's watching the, the blessings come in. And he knows the hard work and the dedication that it takes to be mm -hmm. successful, especially at that high level. And the sport has changed since then, since he entered the ring. And he knows the politics about it. He knows. Uh, but the one thing is, uh, about it, social media is free. So it's good to get exposure 24-7. Now, these fighters, when they fought, it was just during their press conference or when they had a fight date. Now, social media is every single day, 24-7. So you get a chance to capitalize on that. And <clears throat> as you know, Ryan Garcia did that, and so did uh, Jake Paul. And, you know, they're one of the big influencers in boxing. You got to remember and think this. Ryan Garcia packs out a house, and he's not even a world champion yet. Yeah, I know. Just as following his charisma and, you know, he uses his platform, uses it to uh, to higher levels. And, uh, you know, he's hustling out there. He's out there grinding. No, yeah, he really is. That's what it's about. He really, yeah, I was, those were some like huge numbers for the Tank versus Ryan fight. And like, yeah, like yeah, you were saying, without even number. being a world champion, he sold that out. And I feel like people are still talking about him. Like, even with me, people are like, you interviewed Ryan Garcia. Like that's the person that they're most like head over heels about. And I am too. I'm like, yes, I'm like, yes, he is. He's awesome. I think he's just a, he's a great fighter, but I think he's also such a great human. Like when I was even doing my research on him, I just, I don't know. I think he has a very good soul from everything I've heard of him. Like he really cares about what he's doing and he's passionate about it. And I feel like he's very passionate about people too, which I think is great. I love his walkout song, the song that he used to walk out. I loved it. And I love the fact that he wasn't ashamed to do it. He used the biggest platform to give uh, the Lord Almighty all, all the props in the world. I appreciate that. And there's a story on another time that I'll tell you about Ryan Garcia, um, you know, how it went down and how it didn't go down. But it's uh, nothing against Ryan. It's just I had an opportunity to reach out a long time, and uh, I was at a place where I didn't have the income to go down there. So I'll, I'll finish that story later. We're with Ryan Garcia's mom in Las Vegas. She just sat down on a chair, pulled the slot back, 2,800, just boom. Money goes with money. You know, she just hit it, just boom, jackpot. Oh, like my nothing. goodness. Yeah, we were walking around with her and a friend of mine. And uh, she just sat down, pulled that slot back, boom. And we go, where is she at? And then we see her and 28, 28, uh, yeah. $2,800, 2800 but still, that's a big, hey, that's some chunk yeah, of change. That's good there. luck coming out of her. <laughs> hey, man, she she had it going on. And Ryan uh, Ryan does look like his mom. So when you see his mom, you go, oh, okay. 
Oh, really? I haven't seen his mom yet. Yeah. I'm excited now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So listen, how do you want to be remembered? Where do you see yourself? And everybody says five <laughs> years. Where do you see yourself in two years from today? Wow. that That's one of my favorite questions to ask people, but I never get asked that to me. And I'm sitting here like, dang, that's a hard question. <laughs> but um, I just want to be remembered by by being a good person and loving people. I just, I hope people just remember me for my kindness and my energy, just the way I made people feel like that's the most important thing to me at the end of the day is this, that people, I made people feel happy and feel seen. So that's definitely what I care about. But in two years, honestly, I really have no idea. And people keep asking me this and I'm just like, wherever God leads me, I'm open and receptive to right. every opportunity that comes in my way. And I'm, I'm not hyper-focused on one thing. I think when you do that, sometimes you shut the door on other things that could be great for you. And so, yeah, I'm just keeping an open mind, but I know I definitely want to be like a TV host, a reporter, a sports reporter. So definitely something where I'm talking and I'm using my voice to do good works. So wherever God puts me, but hopefully with a network and I just have I can make good money and I can live off it doing what I'm passionate about, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I see it happening. I mean, you're so driven and you're, you're not afraid to take these bold steps in the, these big moves and uh, you put it all in. It's like, Hey, let's put it all on number 10. Boom. You put it all in there. And that's what you need to do sometimes. You know, you know, I've been asked before, Richard, if you were able to move up, would you leave your job? And uh, I gave it some thought. I said, absolutely, because I'm not going to sit back in a rocking chair saying, yeah, I should have, would have, and could have, and, you know, all the above. And, you know, I'll be smart about it, of course, but, you know, I just want this podcast to touch the world. Like I said, I, I'd love it to be the Fighter's Voice Hawaii, the Fighter's Voice Chicago, the Fighter's Voice Las Vegas, the Fighter's Voice LA with your host, Aaliyah Orozco, and on and on. I want the brand to grow. I own the trademark. I own the copyright. You know, I had Mikey Garcia. I interviewed him one time. He got teary eyed. Well, the whole world needed to see that, not just 500 people, you know? I mean, because the interviews are there, the guests are there. It's just getting that platform to explode. And uh, two heads are better than one. Um, you know, iron sharpens iron. So I always think about that. And, uh, you know, I get happy when other people excel. I really do. It's very tough to be happy for somebody when they just kind of throw it in your face a little bit and it happens or, you know, they, they say one thing and do another. So I, I keep my circle very small and uh, I give everybody, everybody an opportunity to either hang themselves or, or, you know, welcome me into their circle. When I say hang themselves, you know, expose themselves. I'll, I'll, I'll change it up and say that um, you being in LA, I mean, you're right there where all the opportunity is. It, it's all right there. And it seems that you're a go-getter. I know you're going to prosper. I know your platform is going to grow. Your voice is going to be heard around the masses. And uh, it's only the beginning for you. You're going to make me cry. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Like your Absolutely. words like really, really spoke to me. So thank you. And thank you for believing in me and supporting me. It literally means like everything to me. Well, you have a story. Everybody has a story. And since we're bringing up this story, where can you be reached at? What is, what's, what is your handle? How can we catch you on Twitter, on Instagram, what's your Facebook? Yes, yes. Are you guys, why am I all emotional? <laughs> That's okay. That's, I, I hey. love getting like deep with people. I'm like, I love it. And I love that. Like you make people feel so comfortable. And I think that's the best thing to have with your interview style. Like people just feel like they can be honest in themselves. And I was nervous, honestly, coming into this for a second. I don't know why, but I just want to let you know, you're very good at that. But people well, can find you. me, of course. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Aliyah Orozco. That's A-L-I-Y-A-H-O-R-O-Z-C-O. And that is also my TikTok account, which I post um, boxing interviews on. And is also my YouTube and then my Twitter, I honestly don't use too much, so forget about that one, but I need to get better about it. But I think that's also just my name with the little underscore at the end. But thank you all so much. I would love to be your guys' friends on social media and support you guys too, so thank you. Hey, any shout outs out there? Anybody you want to reach out to and say hello to? Now's your time. The platform is yours. Um, Shout out to my family. I appreciate you guys always being so supportive to me and 
bending over backwards to help me make my dreams come true. And um, everyone in the boxing community who has been so supportive of me and who has believed in me, like you, Rich, and Michelle, and Ben, and all the fight fans. So thank you guys. And yes, of course, God, I am a Christian. So my relationship with Jesus is super important to me. So always shout out to God for all this, all these opportunities and these this life and my voice and what I get to do. I'm just really thankful. Hey, well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Aaliyah Orozco herself, and she's open. So if you're with ESPN, if you're with CBS, PBC, Matchroom, DAZN, you got to follow her channel. You got to take a look at her, look at her work. She is up for hire. And just remember, reach out to her and you will not regret it. And let them know the fighter's voice sent you. Remember, every fighter has a voice and so do you. As always, it's a wrap. Thumbs up for Richie. Okay, fight fans, it's not goodbye, but until next week. Remember, remember, remember. It's always voiceography at its finest. So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, the special guests, and all the crew right here at the Kick-Ass Podcast, saying hasta luego, babies. And always, thanks for listening.